Well, hello, hello, General Hospital Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Wednesday, December the 11th, 2024. Wednesday, December 11th. Before we get started, everybody mark your calendars for this Saturday, December the 14th. 4 p.m. Pacific time, which is 6 p.m. Eastern time, which is 7 p.m. I'm sorry, 6 p.m. Central time, 7 p.m. Eastern time. I am going live, live, live on YouTube. Uh, you'll be able to chime in, make your comments. I'm going to read your comments live. We're going to have back and forth chat about uh, what's happened on General Hospital in the last month that I did the last live. Let's talk about what we liked, what we didn't like, what we hope we're gonna see and what we're happy to see. So I wanna see you all there this Saturday, December the 14th. All right, now, today was a boring day to me, everybody. Oh my goodness. Let's talk about the wannabe rhino in the room. And that's... uh. Lulu, she feels she going to boss everybody around, you know, telling Jack to call Valentin right now. And he did. And Valentin didn't pick up. And she goes, how do I know? Because Lulu had the phone and it's just ringing and ringing. How do I know you even called Valentin? You could have called anybody. And he looked at her. He goes, you're going to just have to trust me that I called Valentine. Well, I don't. And she still has this phone. She goes, I want my daughter now. And she slams his phone down on Carly's desk, breaks his, the glass on his uh, case, the front of his phone. He looks at her. He walks over to her. He reaches and he takes his phone right out from under his hand. And he just looks at her and he looks at Carly and he walks out. And Lulu is, oh, you know, and Carly's like, Lulu, that is not the way to get Jack to do anything for you. Well, he, how do I know? He's lying. He could really, he knows where Valentine is. Carly says, no, he doesn't, Lulu. And I honestly believe him. He can't make Valentine answer the phone. But if you want his help, doing what you're doing is not going to get it. You're going to have to ease back. Because she says, you can't take on the WSB. And you don't want them you don't want to make an enemy of them. Okay. So Maxie comes in and oh, they, they hug and they talk and Carly tells them, you know what? You guys could have my office. You could talk. Right. Uh, so they catch up and I fast forwarded all of their catching up. Cause I didn't care about any of it. Right. Uh, Jason abducts Martin takes him into the office, into the coffee house. And Martin's like, why am I here? And next thing we know, Aunt Anna comes into the coffee house and he's talking to Spinelli. And she goes, have you found anything? He goes, no, I haven't. And so he goes, she's like, well, keep working on it. And so she heads for Jason's office and Spinelli's kind of like, oh. so she walks in and Martin's like, thank God, commissioner, you're here. I have been abducted. Arrest this man. <laughs> and Anna looked at Jason and she goes, did you get anything out of him yet? And Martin's like, wait, what? He does a double take on that, right? And so she goes, you were Valentine's attorney. You did a lot of things for Valentine." on his behalf. I believe you have a way, if you don't know where he's at, there's something you have that, that will lead us to him. And he's like, no, there isn't. She goes, well, you're able to get him sensitive papers. 
She goes, he said, because I'm on retainer. Every single month, a check comes. It's just automatically deposited into, into my account. And so he goes, that's all I know. And, it, and, and with that being said, he stands up, Jason pushes him back down. And he looks, and so he goes, I don't know anything. And Anna's trying to be the bad cop here. This, that, and the other. You're going to tell us. We're going to bring Charlotte home. Charlotte, blah, blah, blah. So he, he says, I'm telling you, she is my great niece. I definitely, wait a minute. No, that's that's her uncle, Martin. So that's not great niece. That's her, just his uncle. It's Laura's daughter, Laura's his sister. So they, I don't know why he said great niece. It's just as it as a niece. And, you know, I would want to bring her home to my sister. And so Anna takes out zip ties. She gives them to Jason and says something like, incentivize him to talk. And the way she's saying it, oh, like she's sunny giving orders. It sounded so freakishly unnatural to me. I was like, oh, shut up, Anna. Shut up. You have abused the power of your office ever since you've been in it. She's so busy doing her own thing. She forgot that, you know, Special Agent Cates is dead, even though, guess what? The FBI snatched that case from the PCPD, so y'all do what you're going to do. You guys handle it. But anything other than that, she still doesn't solve it. Nor is it anywhere on her radar. So I'm sick of Anna. So they said, well, they take his phone, and Jason puts it up to his face because it has face recognition. And Martin is like, <laughs> you know, and, and Jason goes out and gives it to Spinelli. So Spinelli is downloading Hacky Martin's phone. Right, Mark. She goes well. The bank account that's direct depositing into your account, that's located somewhere. There are some kinds of of there's some kind of of wire trails that is definitely, you know, we're gonna try to get from your phone. And so Jason is out of the room, and Martin's like, okay. I'm telling you, you're not gonna be able to find anything. And if you don't, then what? Then what are you gonna do? Are you going to hurt me? And Anna's just looking at him like, maybe. And I thought, no, you're not, Anna. She didn't say maybe, but she's looking at him like trying to scare him. And I'm like, that is not scaring him. You're still an officer of the law. Actually, one of the highest ones, Commissioner Gord, uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Devane. So Spinelli is out and he actually gets some hits. And it is through the bank account information. Valentin made a withdrawal or some physical activity on a bank in Zurich. And Jason says, yeah, but he could access that from anywhere. He goes, yeah, he could, but he didn't. He did it in person. He says, Valentin is in Zurich. So now they know exactly where Valentin is at, right? So... Carly is there. Oh, she want to, you know, she's not leaving because Jason says she told him Jack found the bug and he's mad at me and blah, blah, blah. So Jason says, okay, now I know, but I'm telling you, Carly, stay away from him. He is my friend. He is not your friend. You can't trust him. Carly, listen to me. No, Jason, you just have to trust me on this. I know what I'm doing. See, isn't it funny? Now she can't listen to a word Jason is saying, not one word. But that's Carly, though. She, she, the only way Jason should have made her, her her doubly swear a promise. Otherwise, she could tell him anything. Remember, he has to, she has to say it three times to him and, and <laughs> swear. But anyway, um, now we're going to see what's going to happen with the, the Valentine situation. Now, Jack was talking to his assistant, Colette, and she was warning him. She says, bottom line, we should have had, we should have let, uh, Valentine take the fall for pikemen and we should have had him put away but you let him go and Brennan said uh, I didn't let Valentine go and she says yeah but you did nothing with your resources 
to apprehend him while he was here. And you actually did help him because you didn't help him get away, but you helped him stay away. And he goes, yeah, but you know what? Now that the cat's out of the bag, now that Lulu's mother's awake and so much attention now is on Valentine. Everybody wants him found. It's become a liability to us. I hope Devane and Morgan find him. Because see, now he'll be able to take the fall. And or Morgan will get Charlotte, Valentino will be, Valentino will disappear, and he'll be out of our hair. Either way, it's a win-win for us. And so she goes, okay, I see the importance of Jason Morgan because of his skill set. I see Commissioner Devane because of her position as having some type of, of relationship with her. But Carly Spencer is a civilian. There is nothing she can offer us. Ooh. Ties need to be cut with her. And he looked at her. He goes, well, you know what, Colette? Uh, you got a lot of work to do because he told her. He gave her the lead. He goes, Charlotte is a teenager. Teenagers live on their phone. I don't care how much on the run they are. She goes, yeah, but I'm sure Valentina's has told her about you know, uh, online presence and he's forbidding her to do that. He goes, Valentine has huge blind spots where his daughter Charlotte is concerned. Charlotte is going to get on social media. Now, it's our job to find out what account is she using. So I want you to go through all her known accounts I want you to find out what the names of her horses are. She loves horses. And I also want you to look for this information also in French because Charlotte is fluent in French. I honestly believe he goes, we're gonna find, we're gonna find Valentine through her. So that was a good angle. And in my mind, I'm thinking, why didn't Spinelli think of that? Except guess what? They don't speak French, but I'm, he could have run an algorithm to translate English into to French, period. Right? So we're we're going to see Charlotte real, real soon. Um, and then we have, let's see, Drew met, not Drew, Curtis met with Jordan. And she, one of the projects that Aurora was working on with the city is she's fast tracking it for him. And he told her, Jordan, I need you to slow down, hold off on it till after the first of the year. And she's like, why? And he told him about Drew, how Drew's double crossing him. And he now has confirmation. And he told her, he goes, I'm going to take Aurora from him. And Jordan said, okay, but you know, Curtis, Aurora was Drew's company. He says, he built, this company from the ground up Curtis says but I built the the health division from the ground up I have just as much stake in the company than Drew and when he said that I thought what math is he using he used none of his money to start that wellness division none and he used all of Aurora's resources from staffing to everything else to develop that division. It's only a division of Aurora, just like Crimson is a division and they've got a bunch of other divisions, right? Curtis, big headed much. And so um, Jordan said, okay, uh, so are you going to take Michael up on this offer? He goes, are you, you going to work with Michael? And he's like, yeah, but not in the way Michael thinks. It's going to be done my way. And I thought, hmm, it's going to be interesting to see. Is Curtis smarter than Michael? Is he more cunning than Michael? The answer is going to be no. 
because Michael was brought up a certain way. And Michael, Michael's instincts are more cutthroat with his Quartermain side, with his Corintho side, with it. Okay. But Michael will let Curtis think. Okay, you think you in charge. Because uh who was it? One of them, Portia or or Jordan said, Do you really think Michael would try to destroy the company? And Curtis says, well, I don't know about destroy it, but he has no vested interest in Aurora. And I'm thinking, hmm, he's been there for the last seven, eight years, running it for years, but he has no vested interest. He might be mad at Drew, but he wouldn't tank Scout's future. What? But okay, I'm going to see how that's going to play out. And then when Portia came, you know, he told Portia the same thing. And she was like, Oh, so you told Jordan before you told me? Same old thing. And he looked at her. He goes, well, honey, that's only because there's a major deal Aurora has in the works with the city. And I needed Jordan to stall on that. So, yes, I told Jordan. I need her as an ally. But I also called. It, it, that's why I called for you to come over. Because now that I have confirmation after talking to Drew today, he has no intentions on making me CEO. I need you to know what I'm doing. And I need you to be by my side. And so she, of course, says, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Whatever you choose to do, I'm by your side. Right? So while Drew Curtis is talking to Portia, Drew is talking to Nina, unbelievable. He pretty much is trying to guilt Nina into softening the blow for Curtis, doing his dirty work, or trying to run an angle so that Curtis won't really want to be CEO of Aurora. And Nina says, you're stabbing him in the back. That's what you're doing. Curtis is my friend. Why would you, and you, you, you've promised him CEO of Aurora. Why are you doing this 180? Nina, I don't need you questioning my decision. She goes, well, I'm going to, because you want me to get involved where my friend is concerned. Why would you give it to Michael? And he says, Michael has run the company for years in my absence as CEO. Michael has more experience as the CEO. And I'm trying to keep Michael happy. She says, oh, oh, for your guilt. I'm trying, you know, so, oh, so this is how you're going to stab Curtis in the back because of your guilt with your actions. And you're going to give, give it to Michael. And so he says, yes, to keep, to make him happy. And look, a happy Michael is a happy Willow. And Nina looked at him. She's like, this doesn't really, she's starting to think you kind of going overboard because he found out about a kiss. I mean, realistically, she's looking at him. She goes, no, I, I don't know. Curtis is my friend. And I have a problem with knowing you're going to stab him in the back and then working with you to make him think like that it's a good thing. And he goes, she goes, why would I do that, Drew? And he goes, here's the thing. Why you would do it? What's more important to you? Your daughter being happy? Her marriage being sound or your friendship with Curtis? Now, do you see what he just did? He roped her into pretty much not back. She's not backstabbing Curtis, but she's taken aside against Curtis. 
because Drew is making it think like the side is against Curtis and Fort Willow, which that's not the case. That is not the case. You stay out of it. You stay neutral. Because right now, the relationship between Nina and Willow is just fine. So why would she even have to involve herself? She's, she's not thinking. Drew knows the buttons to push. Do it for your daughter. Make your daughter happy. You don't want your daughter to be sad. See, come on now. Emotional blackmail. Ooh, yuck. Terrible. Now, Jocelyn arrived at the hospital. And, you know, she and Dex, she's saying, I thought, you know, you going to work for the police, PCPD would be safer than you working for Sonny. Really? Hell. It's the same. Mm -hmm. Every day, Dex Heller and any police officer goes to work. They are putting their lives on the line to protect and serve, or they're supposed to be. Every time Dex went to work for Sonny, he was putting his life on the line to protect and serve Sonny. Same amount of day. If 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 anything, being a police officer is more dangerous because the threats are coming from random occurrences. Sonny, it has to be whoever wants to take him out at what time, at what given time. And if you notice, Sonny's life has really kind of been lulled, right? No real threats at all. So anyway. She's like trying to ask him, does he think Sonny's behind this? Sonny's been awfully quiet. I think that's to deceive you. And Dex looked at her and goes, Just, I do not think this is Sonny. Sonny gave me his word that he was not going to come after me. And she looked at him. She goes, no, Sonny prides himself on his word. He's not going to come after me, Jocelyn. This is something else. I just don't know why right and she goes and by the way he said if Sonny wanted to come after me I'd be dead the job would have been done right okay yeah and he wouldn't have had it done in a public place kids of they come on now Ugh. anyway Jocelyn so that's it, everybody. Nothing else happened. Let's go to comment corner. Comment corner. I'm going from, let me turn my trusty dusty stopwatch on. I'm going to go from the top down today. Uh, Le Leon says, Anna is out of control. She should, Martin should have her bad. Yes, he should. She let the man go. And now she thinks she could do whatever she wants, um, getting everyone in trouble for her mess. I think it's more guilt because she shot the devil's child. Drew is a waste of time. I hope they don't kill Dex now. Dex is going to be fine. I think uh, I like him and Joss. Lulu needs to stop running around town barking orders and being nasty to everyone. I'm glad that Jack took his phone back. I'm not liking the way Lulu is. I'm not. But I really, you know what? Truth be told, I didn't like Lulu's character when she was here before. Donna says, there's no way that Lulu would be running around like that. And what's with the attitude? Normally, you'd be trying to put the piece, the missing pieces together. So ridiculous. Liking Cyrus, getting some of his edge back. Um, they've made him so boring now. I know. I agree with that. It's almost like it was a waste of time, his character. They couldn't decide exactly what they were going to do with him. Because he was like, uh, uh, yeah, they just couldn't decide. Trina, boss thing, boring too. Uh, this new guy is too tall for her. I think so too. And they have no chemistry. Geo's turning into a foolish acting thing. What? Felicia, come on. Cyrus is right there. Just case says Curtis uh, is just an, as arrogant as Drew. Curtis did not build Aurora. 
or didn't build Aurora and got it where it is today, that was Michael. And Michael wouldn't destroy Aurora. Michael is pissed, but he wouldn't take it out on the business. That's not how Michael is. That's a Drew move. That's true. Michael, Michael's more, yeah, his cunningness would not be to tank that business. Just K says, Carly is really pushing Brennan. I hope he tells her no. Or he calls Valentine and Valentine tells Lulu, Charlotte is fine and will not be coming home anytime soon. <laughs> Valentine just didn't pick up. Uh, Leon says, uh, Jack had a look in his eyes that shows he's really hurt by Carly. I know. I think he's going to shift the way he feels about her. I think uh, Cyrus is going to try to finish Dex off at the hospital. I hope they put a cop outside his door. That's interesting. Huh. A little more digitalist, you think? Um, he can't be trusted. That's right. He can't be trusted. Uh, Trina says, hi. I don't recall Michael ever saying he intended, intended to damage the company. Me either. He said he wanted to get rid of Drew. Curtis is getting a big cocky for my liking. Michael has a way, way more experience than he has. Getting his deal, getting his deal with Michael in writing uh, should be smart, but I hope he doesn't plan on crossing Michael. Lashanta says, Michael ran the company and the job uh, should have been his. Why is Curtis so arrogant? Lasanta also says, uh, you said Cyrus would target Dex. He is getting on my nerves, ringing that bell. <laughs> uh, he's running amok. Nobody is safe. I know they do. Are they doing another serial killer? Come on now. Lashanta says, Cardi is out of order. I bet Cyrus stabbed Dex. He did. Felicia's next. I bet Kai has someone else send that work in. Yes, he did. Lulu is doing too much. I don't trust Nina. I trust Nina. Ooh. Wow. First time I've ever said that. Carly's wrong putting Jack on front. I know. I didn't like that. Uh, Curtis, have a seat. Have several seats. Michael should be taking over Aurora. Not him. Uh, Willow, have several seats. Come through Sasha. And then Joanne says, same old Lulu. Never thinks, just acts. The man, uh, everyone should be in, wait, X. And man, everyone should be in that good a shape after surgery and after four years of a coma. I know. My God, it's a miracle. N.K. Rose says, I'm surprised Anna didn't go and retrieve the bug. I know, Anna, no. She wouldn't. She didn't care if he found it and threw it in Cardi's face. Brenda says, Anna don't want Brennan to know be, uh, because involved too, or that she's involved too. His deal to use Sonny, that is, wait, that is those Cassidines. I don't quite understand that comment, Brenda. And then we have Cindy. Cindy says, um, why was the trash can in right rice plaza in an isolated area from the main square uh surely they would have placed trash cans where people could put their trash in it probably did dex probably did not want to pour the alcohol in the ones right there by everybody so they could smell like vodka cans right uh dm taylor says lulu said carly spencer oh see thank you dm she shouldn't have known that I did go back and listen because I caught that too, LOL. She should have said Carly Corinthos. Carly did not come up with Spencer until when she decided to divorce Sonny. Tina says, I think Lulu was writing a story before uh, she had Julian set the explosion. She was writing a story, I think, uh, on the floating rib. When he realized she was going to get the liver instead of dying. He cut her machine off. Oh, uh, really? Uh, possibly. I don't, you mean Cyrus? Hmm. Um, then he tried to kidnap her by transferring her from turning woods. 
killing Sam after the transplant is the only way that only thing that doesn't make sense yet. I would think he would have done it before the transplant. I know if he didn't want Lulu to live. Yeah, I don't know. We, we're in the dark behind that. Um, and then P. Murrow says, wait, he's worried about a four-year-old story after he's been in prison. That's true. And Lulu in a coma. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, one last comment. Uh, Aisha says, Daily Recap Lady, let's start saying that Carly has come up against enough threats in her life, some even lethal, to recognize an empty threat when she hears one. He wasn't having her arrested. I don't believe that he could, even if he really wanted to. And despite his grumbling, he was still waiting. He sure was when she got back. As Brennan was ex uh, was expressing his disappointment in her, I half expected her to snap back saying, who do you think you're lecturing? <laughs> uh, who are you to lecture me? You're not my dad. Uh-oh. The WSB must um, have a dossier on her, if not one of their own. Yes, right. At least the one from the FBI. So Brennan shouldn't really be surprised at her actions. Carly's never claimed to be good, trustworthy, and, uh, and law-abiding. That's why he likes her. And on paper, her past exploits probably reinforce, reinforce the worst things that have ever been thought, <laughs> thought and, and said about her. That's so true. That's so true. I'm going to stop the comment there. Great comment. Great comment, Aisha. Uh, I'm at 10 minutes, everybody. Don't forget this Saturday, the live, live uh, YouTube, um, the live comment corner. I want to hear and I want to see you all in there chiming in the comments. I'll be back tomorrow for another daily recap of General Hospital.